I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 5 this morning. I've been teaching from the book of Luke chapter 5. And I'm still going to continue there. Last Sunday, I spoke to you on the God of the unusual. So listen very closely to the things that um, God will be saying. Luke 5 from verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two sheep standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's. I want you to start that verse 3. He entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought and simon answering said unto him master we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net point number one this morning as i was meditating upon this message today i knew i was going to preach from this passage definitely but the Holy Spirit pointed my attention to verse 5. And two words came up. Toil and nothing. So for people that this describes your life currently, your season is going to change. You're going to move from toiling to resting. And moving from nothing to abundance. A season changes by the word of God not by your effort so for people that that is their condition something is coming your way tonight and today and for those that the word toil is all night you've been looking to have a baby and you have not gotten anything this morning the anointing is stepping into your boat so this that is a word for those category of people as the gift of the spirit the move of the holy ghost is going to come your way toiling all men have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net verse six and when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break and they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them and they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink when simon peter saw it he fell down at jesus knees saying depart from me for i'm a sinful man O lord for he was astonished and all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken and so was also james and john the sons of zebedee which were partners with simon and jesus said unto simon fear not from henceforth thou shalt catch men and when they had brought their ships to land they forsook all and followed him praise god now what are the lessons and the truths that god wants you to get today now take note of this for some of you this will be steps that you can immediately take to enter into experiences in your life as god brings truths of the word of god out and then for some others there will be principles that you will imbibe into your life and apply consistently for long term experiences is that okay 
So take note of that. So if it's a step for you, then you must understand what God is saying. If it's a principle for you, then you must understand um, what God is saying. Sometimes you will mix the two together as you begin to walk with God. Number one, this particular message reveals the before and after salvation experience for a child of God. The before and after salvation experiences of your life. The ship that was empty, that he entered, take that as your life boat before you are saved. That ship is just a ship. You're just a man, a woman, like any other person. Until Jesus entered your life. Amen? My daughter asked me a question. Very instructive. And said, people talk about salvation experience. People, people talk about salvation experience and all that and things like that. And uh, different people write stories and all that. I say, your salvation experience begins from the point that you understood what happened between you and Jesus. Okay? Your salvation experience begins from the point that you understood what happened between you and Jesus. Now, do you know when that happened between you and Jesus? She said, yes. I said, what is the day? That is the day that you got saved. That is the day that Jesus entered your life. You didn't get saved because your parents were evangelists and apostles. That was the day that you got saved. So note it. And that's the day that things change. That you are born in a Christian home does not mean Jesus is in your life. That you attend a Christian church does not mean Jesus is in your life. But from the point that you had an understanding that this is what happened between me and Jesus that changed me. That day, that is the day that this passage can become prophetic in your life. Whether you have been taking advantage of it or not is a different matter. But what happened when you gave your life to Christ is that Jesus stepped into your boat. From that moment, that boat is not ordinary again. If you are born again, you are not an ordinary human being. You are a carrier of Jesus on the sea of life. And your results and your outcomes in life are not supposed to be the same as before Jesus entered. Take note of that very, very clear. It is this lack of understanding that makes Christians, born again people, to be looking for things as if they are not born again. If you saw that boat when it was by the seashore, it was as empty as the second boat. Nothing different, maybe the shape of the boat or whatever and thing, but they were as empty. You can be black, you can be white, you can be brown, you can be yellow, you can be red, you can be male, you can be female, you can be educated, illiterate. If Jesus is not in your life, you are as empty as each other. And when Jesus stepped into your boat, something changed. A significant difference that is to affect and govern your results in life happened a child of god is not some or somebody that an unbeliever can copy and say well if so and so can do it i also can do it he's not doing it because of any skill if you are talking of skill and intelligence they have done it before jesus came overnight the night before they have tried they've done it they caught nothing but then this day, at the wrong time, the wrong moment, Jesus stepped in and something changed. So if you are born again listening to me this morning, something has changed. That knowledge must grip your heart. That knowledge must become a force in your life. Knowledge does not influence you until it becomes habit. Habit is what actually controls our lives, not information. 
information must be converted to habit through repeated practice before it rules your life two men in the bible that what happened to them that they allowed to rule them and influence their results were david and mordecai mordecai was a jew there were many jews in the land of babylon at that time and the king brought a decree that they should bow down for a man a man mordecai said i won't bow for a man they said why he said i'm a jew what does it mean to be a jew i'm a covenant carrier i am not ordinary i am not like every other person you may do that but i'm not going to do it he knew what being a jew meant the other jews didn't know it don't proceed into the future without settling this fact when jesus entered your life how many years ago i want you to take yourself into this passage here did you get what i'm saying see your life as that boat that jesus stepped into and everything that started happening from that time is the prophetic picture of your journey on the sea of life now you may not have been taking advantage of it like the children of israel in the days of mordecai did not take advantage of it the second man that had that understanding that was ruling his life was david when david was sent from home by his father to go and give cheese to his brothers and to greet their captain of um, a thousand and whatever and he got there he saw goliath goliath spoke 40 days goliath was tormenting them with words and he had and david said what shall be done for the man that killed this uncircumcised philistine nobody was talking of killing him they were scared of him they were afraid and david kept repeating who is this uncircumcised philistine that he should be talking like that what shall be done for the man that killed him and remove this reproach and eventually saul had and called david he said let nobody's heart fail him for fear of this guy your servant will go and fight him i was watching my father's animals a lion came and took one little lamb i went after that lion and when the lion rose against me i smote the lion and killed it and took my lamb from his mouth a bear came i went after the bear and smote the bear and took the bear out of his mouth now at that point anybody listening to that boy must know that this is not another boy speaking david was 17 at this time he wasn't a soldier he did not know how to use his sword what did he use to kill the lion and the bear something was in this boy's life and he said the lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver this uncircumcised philistine to my hand for who is this uncircumcised philistine he kept repeating uncircumcised uncircumcised what is about this circumcision when god caught covenant with abraham in genesis 17 he said i'll be god to you in your generation and to your seed after you in their generation and this is the sign of the covenant that is between me and you and your seed every male child that you have must be circumcised on the eighth day the circumcision is a very painful process that they remove the first skin of the male and for days he will be feeling pain but when it's done as a child they will overcome it quickly if it is done later it can be very painful but and every time they do it you know david must have observed and wonder why are they doing this they did it for him but you know every every other male child in israel they carried this the same man but they didn't bother and that's the problem many christians we come to church with the label of christian what does it mean to be a christian many times we say the devil is powerful when it is a man that is not on ground for god did you hear what i'm saying are you on ground for god in your family now if a witch is in your family the witch has swallowed something somebody is inside you it is a battle not between you and the witch between who is inside you and who is inside the witch the bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world 
David, do you know what the Bible said to, to Elisha? said, it, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. The battle is not between you and somebody. It is between the person inside you and the, 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 the problem that Peter had was not Peter's own to solve. You enter this boat, we solve that problem. It is time for your results in life to defy human explanation. David said in Psalm 72, I am like a wonder unto many, but thou art my stronghold. Who is in your boat? Because you must know what happened to you when you gave your life to Christ. As a student, the greatest helper in academics is inside your boat. He can lead you where to read what to read. The greatest business advisor is inside your boat. Have you seen a banker give you a counsel that put money in your bank except the one that you brought here, brought here yourself? The greatest business counselor is inside you. You should never have any struggle. I told every staff in the office, if you do any negotiation, you will pay yourself. He said, why? I said, because you don't know how to negotiate. What? I said, the Lord tells me how much to pay. You say, what if they don't agree? Let him convince them. What did I say? Let him convince them. Have you related with the Lord like that before? Have you ever asked Jesus, how much do I pay for this pair of shoes? You don't. You pay what seems right to you. Are you with me here? And you lose a lot of money. The greatest marriage counselor is inside you. You should never have one day of struggle with your spouse. You should. Do you know any business, any marriage counselor better than Jesus? You know anyone? Huh? All, all, of, all of these people that are, go, that, that, that are going to date inside, I want to, I, I'm a young man of 25 looking for a lady to marry what the the person that knows who she should, should marry is inside you here jesus who should i marry the one that knows tomorrow that knows yesterday and knows today at the best you know yesterday and today and you don't know it perfectly he knows everything knows tomorrow he can tell you why have you been operating in neglect of him? That is why your boat has been empty, even though he entered. He didn't enter as a guest. He entered to take over. Have you allowed him to take over your boat? When he entered the boat of Peter, he said, launch out into the deep. And let down your net for a drought. He told them what to do. And nothing happened until they obeyed that. Now this morning, I want to believe God for you. That your personal results in life will become prophetic. Yeah. Not academic. I can tell you stories. All right. As a student, the first board of trustees that we had in the ministry, one of my lecturers in school was on the board. And he knew the power of God was in my life. Because he taught me a course that 40% of the marks, I was not there when he did the continuous assessment for them. I went out in evangelism. And I went to meet him in his office. Sir, I heard you have done this continuous assessment and all that. And then. He said, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm busy outside and i didn't want to tell him what i was doing as a christian i knew he was a christian i didn't want to go i wanted to prove god is real 
So eventually I told him there's a fellowship I'm coordinating in town and all. He said, oh, okay, I'm a Christian too, but um, okay, all right, go and find out from your colleagues where, what, what, wherever the test came out from and they meet me in my office. He was going to do my own for me. And my, the first classmate that I met was um, a Muslim guy, a classmate and all, and said, you this SU boy. We tell you that you should face your book, your, 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 your studies, you are going out for evangelism and things like that and all that. I was angry. I said, well, I'm not going to ask anybody again. I'm going to ask the Lord. Lord, where did the questions come from? And he led me to the places that the question for the test came out. You say, what would have happened if he didn't come out like that? Now, I would have failed, definitely. If he did, if it wasn't, so I would have failed. But there is a real Jesus in your boat, not a fake Jesus. You say, but I ask me, how do you hear him? You know, that's the biggest problem that, that we have. Huh? Now, you have. You have two children, right? One is older than the other. Do you talk to them the same way? How do you talk to the younger one? The, 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 the younger one, you, you use more graphic pictures, is it correct? To explain so that you get what, what you are talking about. Good. And then you have a younger brother, do you? Yes. You have a younger brother? Do you talk to your younger brother the same way that you talk to your children? No, you expect him to understand more and all that. Are you following what I'm saying? Let me simplify divine communication to you, for you today. God will talk to you in a way that suits you. Simple. When you are spoken to God, now let the Holy Ghost show you the communication of God. The communication of God is in everybody's life. The problem is that they are looking for God to talk to them in a way he talks to somebody they have been hearing. If you ask mommy and myself, God has not spoken to the two of us since we have known each other the same way. Are you following what I'm saying? So he led me to the four questions. Alright? Everybody, and I, I want you to stand up to your feet now and put your hand on your forehead. Let me pray for you. That the communications of God, hear this. Hear this. Hear this. But today, God is doing something for you at the headquarters. You will not be a natural human being again. You are going to be a supernatural human being. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Ah, except you are not one of his sheep. Except Jesus lied. When he said, my sheep know my voice, it means the voice of the shepherd is recognizable for the sheep. Put down your hand, first of all, because I'm going to pray for you that the communications of God in your life will stand out for you. Yeah. It is personalized communication. When we went to Israel, the, our tour guide told us a story and said there was a man, a, a, a shepherd, that some thieves went to pick five sheep from a sheepfold. And they took them to the sheep market. And the sheep market is filled with hundreds of thousands of sheep. And it, they, it, there's no way naturally he can find them. And when he went to the sheep market, he said, there's no way, do you, can, do you record? He said, he said, my sheep know me. He said, there's a song I sing for them. Hundreds of thousands. And the shepherd began to sing that song. From different corners, the five sheep started coming towards that voice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That story turned something inside me. Except you are not a sheep. Except your salvation was fake. That's why when my daughter asked me, I said, it is the day that it, it dawned on you, you understood something happened. Some of you, some of you did, you, you repeated the prayer when you were a child, but nothing happened that time. It was when you were in your teenage years that you understood in, in secondary school fellowship. That was when somebody explained to you, but look, that's when, when that thing, that was when you got born again. Stop saying you got born again when you were five. The time that you understood what happened, that's when you actually got saved. All the other one was religious Christianity. There are children of pastors that become pastors without being born again. So there's no voice of God that is in their life. They are just using human intelligence. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The communications of God are in every sheep's life. 
He's not going to be telling you, ah, what kind of what kind of father do you have? You are a father. And you want to your boy in primary school. You want to do like this. Is that how you communicate with your boy? You want him to understand you. God wants you to understand him. Why will he be talking to you in a way you don't understand? That means there's a communication that is already readable. Already noticeable that you are not noticing. 